Hey all, so today we are going to discuss about forensic odontology and it is divided into two terms. The first one is forensic which is derived from a Latin word that is forensis and it means pertaining to forum, right? So in ancient Rome, the forum was a public square where all the trials and debates were held and was considered as or served as a court of law. Right. So we are supposed to collect all the evidences or um, we are supposed to gather all the information and we are supposed to present inside the court basically. And the second term is odontology. So logy as we know that it means study and odont means tooth. So it is study of teeth and it basically denotes dentistry. Right. So now the definition of forensic odontology. So it has been defined by FTI that is Federation Dentier International as that branch of dentistry which in the interest of justice deals with proper handling and examination of dental evidence and with proper evaluation and presentation of dental findings. So we are basically supposed to find all the dental evidences, right? and presenting to the court in order to get justice. So this was all defined by or explained by FTI and this definition was given by Kieser and Nielsen in 1970, right? Now what forensic odontologists do? So as an expert, forensic odontologist should be able to identify unknown human remains, right? Either via you can say comparison of postmortem dental evidence with dental records of the presumed deceased or via comparing between uh, the postmortem and antemortem dental evidences, right? Uh, the person should assist at the scene of mass disaster. The expert that is forensic odontologist should be able to elicit the ethnicity of the person should be able to assess the sex or gender of that person, right? And should be able to estimate the age of the person, right? In both the living and dead. Now the analysis and investigation of bite marks. It can be over anything like human tissue, animal tissue, inanimate objects or foodstuffs, etc. Right? So uh, the forensic odontologist are, is supposed to gather all these information about a particular person and present these evidences in court of law as expert witness, right? Now the importance of teeth in forensic odontology. So firstly, the teeth or the tooth structure is basically very, very stable and durable. So um, it can be heated up to the temperature of 1600 degrees centigrade, right, which is commendable and without appreciable loss of microstructure. So it represents its stability and durability, right. Secondly, it is an excellent source of DNA. So we can extract DNA from the tooth structure only, right. And thirdly, it is very unique, right. So the weather in size, shape, pattern, wear or repair, right? So basically the 16 missing teeth can produce approximately 600 million combinations, right? So it represents its uniqueness, right? Now dental identification procedures. So the first one is comparative identification. This method is used if we are having some clue about that diet subject basically. So in that case we are comparing the antemortem that is before death evidences and the postmortem evidences that is after death evidences which uh, we have collected right. So it is a comparative identification procedure in which we are supposed to compare between the um, you can say evidences right. Now the second one is the reconstructive identification or dental profiling in which we are not having any clue about that dyed subject, right? We are supposed to collect or gather all the information from that remains of that dyed subject, right? 
so this is known as reconstructive identification or dental profiling right now let's discuss about uh, these dental identification procedures one by one so the first one is the comparative identification procedure and it includes um certain steps you can say first one is the oral autopsy then the second one is obtaining dental records third one is the comparing anti and post mortem dental data and the last one is writing a report and drawing conclusion right so the first step is oral autopsy which is also known as necropsy or post mortem examination right um now the systemic protocol starting with critical examination of the external features of the body so we are supposed to examine the whole body external features of the whole body common post mortem findings should be known like rigor mortis or liver mortis why rigor mortis is considered important because in rigor mortis it may cause jaws to be very rigid and therefore we are supposed to use the mouth gags or trisma screws or intraoral myotomy right so these procedures uh, are required in order to separate the jaws right so the individual or you can say the forensic odontologist should know about these conditions such as rigor mortis and liver mortis right now the teeth that are collected as an evidences uh can be brittle too so they are supposed to be reinforced with cyanoacrylate glue right before examining right now the incinerated bodies radiographs should be taken only after removing the tongue right or the contents of the floor of the mouth in a tunneling fashion basically right if the body is totally damaged or destructed or burned right in those cases if we are supposed to take the radiographs we are supposed to remove the tongue and contents of the floor of the mouth in order to take the radiographs right now the status of each tooth should be recorded hard and soft tissue samples should be taken right all these information pertaining to the body must be entered into a dental form basically this dental form is known as modified interpol post mortem odontogram because it is after death evidences which we have collected and seen and recorded right so it should be on a post mortem odontogram now the second step is obtaining dental records so anti mortem dental data that is before death dental evidences should be obtained from treating dentist the records can be in the form of charts radiographs cast or photographs so all these dental records should be obtained and uh, these records should be transcribed onto modified interpol anti mortem odontogram right anti mortem uh, means before death all the records should be taken so now we are having two uh, dental data Uh, you can say the post mortem dental data and the anti mortem dental data so both these records are supposed to be compared in order to identify the individual right so an individual with multiple dental treatment and unusual features has a better likelihood of being identified right than someone with no extraordinary dental characteristics so acharya and taylor have concluded that a single point of concordance between anti mortem and post mortem data may be sufficient to establish identity considering of course the uniqueness of such a feature and circumstances of the case right so now the last step is to write a report and drawing conclusions basically right so a detailed report and factual conclusions based on comparison must be clearly stated in those reports right so inconsistency or you can say the differences can be there in both the records right but to prove the identity of that individual the differences should be explainable so the differences should be explainable basically for example 
वन सिक्स कलेक्टेड एज एन पोस्टमार्टम एविडेंस वॉज रिस्टोर्ड बट एंटी मार्टम रिकॉर्ड शो दैट इट वॉज इंटैक्ट राइट सो दिस डिफरेंस कैन बी इजिली एक्सप्लेनेबल दैट द रेस्टोरेशन वॉज मेड ऑन अ डेट आफ्टर अवेलेबल डेंटल रिकॉर्ड्स राइट बट इफ रिवर्स हैपन्स दैट इज वन सिक्स वॉज इंटैक्ट इन पोस्टमार्टम रिकॉर्ड्स एंड इज फिल्ड इन एंटी मार्टम रिकॉर्ड सो दिस कंडीशन इज नॉट एक्सप्लेनेबल एंड इट सजेस्ट अ मिस मैच बेसिकली राइट सो द एक्सप्लेनेबल डिफरेंसेस शुड बी देयर राइट सो फॉर आइडेंटिफिकेशन सिग्निफिकेंट सिमिलैरिटीज शुड बी देयर एंड एक्सप्लेनेबल डिफरेंसेस मस्ट बी देयर राइट सो नाउ कंक्लूजन्स कैन बी मेड सो द फर्स्ट कंक्लूजन कैन बी पॉजिटिव आइडेंटिफिकेशन so this indicates that the post and the antemortem dental data match each other and the identity is proven beyond reasonable doubt the second one is probable identification so there is a high level of concordance between two sets of data but may lack certain uh, records or you can say radiographic support the third one is pos- possible identification the post and antemortem data are in agreement but the available information is insufficient right so the quant- quantity matters but quality also matters so possible identification is there in which the available information or the data is insufficient basically now the fourth one is excludes identification um the both the data records are basically or clearly inconsistent because there are some unexplainable differences right which indicates a mismatch and the last one is insufficient information so the information that we have uh, recorded is basically minimal or insufficient to draw any conclusion on the identity of that subject right of the deceased basically so now identification in disasters so for this purpose there is a dental section and this dental section is basically having three units that is post mortem unit anti mortem unit and the uh, comparison identification unit right so the post mortem unit will collect all the evidences present at the site right uh, will collect all the tooth present or um, in the form of photographs in the form of radiographs etc and the anti mortem unit will collect all the um evidences available for the that uh, possible individual that is affected basically now comparison and identification unit will basically compare both the records that is post mortem and anti mortem records right that are collected by the two units right and to make their work load easier or work easier there is um, there are certain software programs such as identify identify odonted and idis right and also there is a software program called plus data dvi system international right so this software uh, program is basically free to use right um so the dental dna so dna can be extracted from the pulp of teeth from decomposed or burned bodies if there are no evidence present only a single tooth can also help in identifying that individual right through the pulp present inside the tooth right um pcr also allows the amplification of even highly degraded dna if a, only a small amount of dna is also present this inside the tooth can also help in identifying the individual right palatal rugae in identification what if the individual is edentulous right 
um, so in those conditions palatal rugae are considered very very important as they are unique to an individual basically right they seldom change shape with age and reappear after trauma or surgical procedures but the thing is that they are unique in nature or pattern you can say so the classification of palatal rugae is as follows there are primary rugae which are greater than 5 mm there are secondary rugae which um, are 3 to 5 mm in length and third one is fragmentary rugae which is greater than 2 mm but less than 3 mm right so there are certain rugae which are um, less than 2 mm in length they are not considered right basically now thomas and kotze also have given a classification about the patterns of primary rugae right which were having a length of basically more than 5 mm right so they can be branched unified cross linked annular or papillary so these are basically the patterns um, now the analysis of rugae pattern so now otani and co-workers have suggested a straightforward visual comparison right a visual comparison basically of post and antemortem rugae patterns right which can be obtained from dentures so this method that is only visual comparison was considered more reliable than any of the you know uh, patterns or uh, classifications basically so neither classification nor computed aided uh, method is mandated right so this is computer aided basically method is mandated so in this uh, video we have discussed about uh, forensic odontology and um, types of dental identification procedure and most importantly the comparative type of dental identification now in the next video we will discuss about the reconstructive dental identification procedure thank you for watching